Okay, I'll admit it. As you can probably tell by the title, this video is gonna be a bit of a tease. Uh, and so I'm gonna be very Canadian right now and say that I'm sorry. And that's because today we're gonna to be talking about this. This is the Ryzen 9 3900. And no, it's not the X version or the recently announced XT model. In fact, it's a processor that has been flown under the radar since launch for about a year. And that's because AMD only made this thing available on pre-built systems, or if you're lucky enough, every now and then you can find a 3900 floating around on AliExpress or eBay. Um, this sample that I have over here was pulled straight out of the HP Omen 30L, which I did a complete teardown of recently. In fact, if you're interested in checking that out, link will be right over here. But basically, I wanted to find out what the true potential of this processor is uh, when it's not tied down to a basic B450 motherboard. And you know what? The more we looked at the performance numbers and especially overclocking, the more I wished AMD would sell it. This is really a wolf in sheep's clothing. But at the same time, I also understand why they don't want people to get their hands on these CPUs directly off retail. So let's get into that right after this. Say hello to proper airflow with Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX, a compact mid tower with a mesh front panel and three 140mm Pure Wings 2 fans that are silent and capable. Enjoy tasteful ARGB illumination, a Type C port, and an easy case to work in. Check it out below. All right, so from a specs perspective, the 3900 is basically a more efficient 65 watt version of AMD's Ryzen 9 3900X. In order to get that lower TDP rating, AMD reduced the clock speeds and voltage, making it identical to the Ryzen 9 Pro 3900, so it still has 12 cores, 24 threads, and the same amount of cache like its bigger brother. But why even create this thing and not sell it to people like you and I? Well, basically, AMD launches processors so that system builders have a higher end but more power efficient 24 thread processor uh, that they can sell at a premium. Because if you look at it, this CPU consumes less power, which means they don't have to spend more money on more expensive components to support a 105 watt uh, 3900X. I'll give you a perfect example. If you look at the HP Omen 30L, which featured the 3900, there's just no way that the cooling solution and the motherboard can support a higher watt TDP for an extended period of time. If they had put a higher spec processor in there, it would have been necessary to add a better motherboard with expanded power delivery and more PCB layers, along with a less generic heatsink. But then again, if you look at the Intel systems that HP Omen is offering, they're working with better Z490 motherboards and liquid cooling options. I mean, it is a conversation for another day, but you get the idea. Anyways, for most people, the thought of sacrificing performance, especially in gaming, for better efficiency isn't really appealing. For the small form factor crowd though, well, this kind of CPU would be absolutely perfect in my opinion. I mean, sure, it's simply a detuned 3900X and you can get very similar results by simply undervolting that processor. Yet, this is a simple drop-in solution that's supposedly been binned for its ability to run at maximum efficiency while delivering consistent frequencies. And don't think for a second that AMD is using cores that wouldn't make the cut for a full 3900X's higher clock speeds. And that's because at least a sample that we have over here can overclock like crazy. I mean, it's astronomical. I don't know what's the right term to say. It's just incredible. With a bit of coaxing, 1.35 volts set in the BIOS plus LLC, it didn't have any problem hitting a stable 4.4 gigahertz on all cores while being cooled by a Noctua U12S. Going above that seemed to cause an immediate black screen, so it's likely we'd hit the maximum allowable input power, but like you'll see later, those speeds delivered some incredible benchmark results. Looking at power consumption, it's really amazing to see what AMD has done with this processor. It needs almost 100 watts, less than the Intel i9-10900K, but it's got two dozen threads. Another thing I wanna mention here is even though the 3900 is rated at 65 watts, its actual power draw is close to 90 watts. Under heavy multi-core load, we saw package power readings around 88 watts, which is still super efficient, but a lot higher than what's being claimed. Now, speaking of benchmarks, as always, we ran our full suite of tests on this processor, and it was a lot of fun. Like, we had a lot of fun reviewing the results and just comparing it to uh, our rest of the CPU lineup. <sighs> Let's take a look. Based on paper specs alone, you'd think the 3900 would get kicked in the teeth by the 3900X. 
but that isn't really the case, even though its frequencies are between 300 and 700 megahertz lower. In most cases, it loses by at the most 12%, and in many cases, the gap's even smaller. There's a reason for that too. Even though AMD rates the Ryzen 9 3900 at much lower boost and base frequencies, those are just theoreticals. In real world speeds, in both lightly and heavy multi-threaded workloads, they're actually a lot closer to the 3900X. I have to say, this processor is probably the best example of what AMD can do with its current generation architecture. It combines low power consumption with some really impressive benchmark results, but it also shows how much additional power they needed to get the relatively minor performance increase we're seeing with the 3900XT and the 3900X. As for gaming results, this is one area that I was a bit concerned about. As it started off really poorly for the 3900, since Call of Duty seems to like higher clock speeds over core counts, but then moving on to other games, the GPU itself becomes more of a bottleneck, even though it's an RTX 2080 Ti chewing through a resolution that's just 1080p. I mean, sure, this processor's frame rates aren't 100% aligned with the others, but there's just no way someone staring at the screen would notice a difference here. Even the 1% lows were super similar going from one CPU to the next, with only the 10900K offering anything close to a different experience, and even then, it wasn't all that much better. But what about those overclocking results I promised you at the beginning? Well, here they are as promised, my friends. And of course, the Ryzen 9 3900 chugging along at a constant 4.4 gigahertz is gonna be a dominant beast in pretty much every application, especially the ones that rely on multi-core workloads. On the other hand, if there's a program like Premiere that relies more heavily on the GPU, increasing CPU frequencies has a pretty minor effect. In gaming though, well, let's just say that the 3900 goes from an okay gaming CPU to one of the best around. That's mostly because running at a constant 4.4 gigahertz adds a bit more than a gigahertz to the in-game frequencies I saw during stock speed runs. So that pretty much wraps up this quick little video on a very rare little CPU. Basically what I'm trying to say is that the Ryzen 9 3900 is one of the best processors AMD has launched in this generation. It's efficient, it runs cool, and it overclocks really, really well. And if you look at the stock clock speeds, you're actually not losing all that much in terms of performance compared to the Ryzen 9 3900X. This is basically the pinnacle of Zen 2, and it just really goes to show what the architecture can do. And it's amazing. It's just too bad that they're only available for OEMs and other system integrators. But I also understand some of the questions that AMD would go through if they made this widely available. I mean, would they market this from an efficiency standpoint and sell it for more uh, compared to the 3900X? Or would they sell it for less targeting lower performance? I mean, those are certainly some things to consider. Honestly, in the retail market, I think this would be a niche CPU without a real home. It would appeal to some small form factor enthusiasts or someone who wants lower power consumption without sacrificing core count. I know one thing for sure, I would totally rock this thing and it's definitely not going back to that HP Omen 30L. In fact, it's going on to a very special build coming very soon. So on that note, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.